Unfortunately, I have bad news. We have much more severe weather on the way to millions of people across the central and eastern United States, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. You can see the remnants of the storm system that occurred yesterday that caused all the devastation in Iowa. We'll be talking about that a little bit here, but uh, thankfully that is dying out. It's not really causing many problems as it goes towards the east. However, new storms are forming right now as I film this video in Oklahoma, and that's gonna to lead to more severe weather today. And we're gonna really dive into that severe weather the threat right here in a moment. But first, I do want to talk about what happened yesterday. 481 severe weather reports in yesterday's regional tornado outbreak, where we had 23 tornado reports, 139 wind reports, and 319 hail reports on May 22nd. Of course, Hunter Hurley sent in these photos right after the tornado yesterday, and this is just some absolutely incredible damage. This is specifically in the Greenfield area where one of those tornadoes happened. There were a lot of tornadoes, but this one seems like it's the most intense one. Everything that I I'm seeing here and in other damage photos and videos that I've reviewed is consistent with EF4 damage. We might have even had a couple of different areas that may be flirted with the EF5 damage indicators. Obviously, we don't know. The people that live out here, they don't care. It doesn't really matter, but it's very likely that we're going to see a high-end tornado rating come out of this tornado, but it'll take a little while before we know the extent of the damage. Obviously, we're going to wait on the National Weather Service to do those surveys. They've got three teams out there already doing this. We've got a team down here in Corning and Red Oak for the first series of tornadoes that occurred yesterday. We've got one team specifically dedicated to Greenfield, and then we've got another team that's going to be up here north of Des Moines for that tornado that we tracked going really close to Nevada, Iowa. And once again, it'll take several days for us to understand the full scope of the damage and before we really know the final rating of that Greenfield tornado. Thankfully, in the wake of this damage, the Y'all Squad was able to raise an additional $100,000 for tornado victims yesterday. That puts us over $400,000 over the past 30 days. So thank you guys so much for allowing us to be able to help people in this way. That's a lot of money. And we're actually gonna be able to make a huge difference here as we already have boots on the ground. The Y'all Squad is already in Greenfield. We're working with emergency managers. We're setting up shop to give out free meals and internet to people. And then of course, we're gonna be talking to individuals and helping them out on a personal level as well and helping clean up whatever we can do to help. We're gonna do it thanks to you. And to add to what we know about the outbreak overall on May 21st, we do unfortunately Unfortunately, have three confirmed fatalities. Two of those are in Greenfield and one in Adams County, which is associated with the Greenfield tornado. That number is expected to go up as there are a lot of injuries associated with this as well. So unfortunately, that's where we are there. We'll keep you updated. But we have to look towards the future as well. As I stated at the beginning of this video, more severe weather is on the way. We've got an enhanced risk of severe weather today in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, and a slight risk that goes all the way up the Ohio River Valley up into the Northeast. There is a tornado threat today, but it is small in comparison to what we had yesterday. The main threat is going to be the hail, okay? So we've got a damaging hail risk today in the Dallas-Fort Worth region up towards Little Rock. Severe weather is also expected tomorrow in a large area from Memphis to Dallas up through southern portions of South Dakota. This is also mainly driven by a wind and hail threat. The tornado threat doesn't look incredibly high here, but it's not zero, so, you know, don't let your guard down. And then severe weather is going to continue into Friday, a little bit less of a severe look here, but still, we're going to see damaging winds and hail possible from Chicago back down towards Little Rock and Memphis, maybe even as far east as Indianapolis on Friday, May 24th. Here's what some of these storms could look like on radar as we go towards about 6 p.m. today. Big time supercells around Dallas, back towards Brownwood, San Angelo, Ballinger, Texas. This is going to certainly be causing some instances where we have tennis ball to baseball size hail, maybe even larger. These could be packing a big punch as they go into Texarkana as well, with winds above 60 to 70 miles per hour. Little Rock, the bulk of the storms are going to get to you between 8 and 9 p.m. this evening. We're also going to see some strong storms up here around Owensboro and Bowling Green, Kentucky around that time. And we're going to see strong storms up through Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York as well. But they will be much more scattered and less severe in nature. But certainly we can't rule out some golf ball size hail and some 60 mile per hour wind gusts as this storm system continues to wreak havoc down here in the south as another little mesoscale convective system tries to get its act together along the Red River Valley as we go into the early morning hours on the 23rd. But look at this, our next severe weather threat as we go deeper into the 23rd is going to form down here in Oklahoma with more hail producing supercells. Once again, there's a little bit of a tornado threat with these as well, but the big hail and strong winds are going to be the main threat between Oklahoma City and Tulsa back down towards Dallas. And then we're going to have a big wind threat with this line of storms that's going to try to come through Omaha early in the morning on the 24th. I mean, it's incredible how much is going on here. Just constant severe weather 
weather across the central and eastern portions of the U.S. This is not exactly what the radar is going to look like, but this gives us an idea of just how sporadic and how intense some of that severe weather is going to be. Now, of course, it doesn't stop there. In fact, I think we're going to have even worse severe weather after that as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, we've already got a slight risk of severe weather here on May 25th for portions of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas. And out of every day over the next week or so, the day I am most concerned about is Sunday, May 26th. This looks like it's going to be another major severe weather outbreak with tornadoes, just like we've been seeing time after time again this year. This time it's going to be focused up here in northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, over towards western Kentucky, southern Illinois, southwestern portions of Indiana, and western portions of Tennessee. That's what it looks like right now anyways. That could change. But I really want to go over the details on this one because this one looks bad. But we're going to dive into those details right here in a moment because I want to take a break and talk to you about your internet security because that's very important. And also because thankfully we've got an awesome sponsor in today's video. Aura Identity Theft Protection. You know, it's kind of unsettling to see how much of our personal information is out there for anyone to grab. Our names, email addresses, it's all up for sale. And that's why I have partnered with Aura. Aura is more than just a cyber security tool. It's a shield against scammers, spammers, and hackers. It's kind of like having a digital bodyguard for your data. Just recently, AT&T disclosed a massive data breach. Over 72 million customer records were exposed, and that's a stark reminder of how vulnerable our information can be. But with Aura, you don't have to worry. It consolidates all the protection I need in one app without compromising my privacy or security, and it's going to do the same thing for you. And guess what? You can try it for yourself with a two-week free trial. All you've got to do is head over to that link in my description right now. Stop data brokers from exposing your personal information and go to my sponsor Aura by clicking that link in the description. And once again, you're going to be able to get yourself a two-week free trial. You don't want to pass this up and you won't regret it. Okay, now let's get back into the video. All right, so this little dip in the jet stream is what's caused all of our problems with all of that devastation in Iowa and our big storms in Oklahoma. That's going to get out of here, but we've got another dip coming immediately after that that's going to allow for some lift here out in front of it and cause some storms. And we just talked about those storms. We talked about all of the impacts that could come from that with our next couple of days as far as severe weather goes. Another larger dip is going to come in on Thursday. This is what's going to cause that maybe damaging wind event up here in the northern plains as we go later in the day on Thursday. That'll propagate over to the upper Midwest as we go early into the day on Friday. Once again, severe weather is still going to be possible on Friday, but we get a little bit of a break here as unfortunately another even larger dip comes into the picture on Saturday and Sunday, where on these days we're going to have a lot of warm, moist air to work with here as our next big severe weather system comes through. Once again, just a perfectly timed, negatively tilted trough with a lot of instability here. This is definitely going to lead to some big problems this weekend. Here's a look at lightning strikes over the next week or so. You can see where some of the higher concentration of severe weather is likely going to be. According to the European model, there's that damaging wind threat on Thursday into Friday. Early in the morning, we could have lingering squall line that continues to go through the area into the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley on Friday. Another little mesoscale convective system possible there as we go into Saturday. Just a ton of different opportunities for severe weather here. Our big system, though, the one I'm really concerned about is really starting to show its face here late in the day on Saturday in the form of supercells and more severe weather in Oklahoma and Kansas and Texas. And then that's going to continue into Sunday as potentially a big supercellular threat and a big tornado threat on Sunday. I can't stress this enough. I'm very concerned about Sunday right now as far as the severe weather is concerned. And then once that gets out of here, I think we're going to have a little bit of a break. But this severe weather outbreak, this multi-day sequence of severe weather is going to go out with a bang on Sunday. I am very confident about that. And it's not just me. We've been using this tool a lot this year. It's been very good. It's been very accurate this year. The CSU learning model is painting a very elevated risk for severe weather on Sunday. And this is another reason why I'm fairly confident that we're actually going to see some big time storms on Sunday. The details and the trough and, and all that stuff are there, but the mesoscale stuff is not going to be apparent to us until we get closer. So I don't want to go too deep on like, oh, here's where the supercells are going to be possible. Here's the mode of the storms. You know, let's not worry about that right now. Just know that if you're any of these shaded areas on Sunday, we're probably going to be talking about you in the context of severe weather and tornadoes. So go ahead and take whatever precautions that you want to take at this point for that. A good graphic that kind of shows you where the bullseye is going to be for a lot of the rain and storms that we're going to see over the next week or so is the total accumulation over the next seven days. You can see very clearly that we're going to be talking a lot about this area right here. In fact, maybe in Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky there, we might have some flooding problems as a result of some very intense rainfall over 
over the next week or so. And then thankfully, I really do believe that once that big storm system gets out of our hair on Sunday, as we go into Monday, we're going to enter a new pattern. So the week of the 27th through the 31st of May, I think we're going to enter into this pattern where we're finally going to get some cooler weather in the east and more of a trough in the west. And that's the complete opposite of what we've been in. And that's going to stop the ability for those big plains, severe weather systems to be able to form. Now, this kind of pattern can actually lead to more severe weather up north, maybe some severe weather up here in the northeast, and of course down here in the southeast as well, but I don't think we're going to see any major tornado outbreaks with a pattern like this in place where we've got cooler weather in the east, warmer weather in the west, and hopefully we can hang on to that for a couple more weeks so we can clean up, you know what I mean? And unfortunately, y'all, I do think this is going to be a terribly active hurricane season, so we need a break. June and July hopefully are going to be quiet, but as of right now, I can only tell you with any confidence at all that maybe the last week of May will be somewhat quiet. All right, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Super huge shout out to Aura for sponsoring this video. That's super awesome of them. It's always nice for us to have a sponsor. Thank you guys for helping us out as well, for liking the videos and sharing them and the live streams and everything. We wouldn't be able to reach so many people and deliver life-saving information if it wasn't for you. Please go subscribe to our Y'all Squad channel. We're going to have updates for you over there as far as what we're doing with the Y'all Squad. We've got hundreds of thousands of dollars to distribute, so there's going to be a lot of stuff going on over there. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.